So uh, I watched Susan May a week ago, the movie. Yes, I was going to go see it in theaters off a of whim. Like literally just, I don't know how I saw the trailer. I don't think I saw the full trailer. It was probably a YouTube ad that I ended up skipping. But before skipping, I'm like, like this looks really good. Like pretty crisp and it was the visuals were absolutely stunning i enjoyed the movie so much that i just wanted to uh talk about it for a little bit just you know quick quick little video just to you know i mean it was an experience i mean i like it was so i purposely i had actually been ever since it dropped on crunchyroll i had been planning on watching it i think it dropped back around uh thanksgiving i went down south to see some family car ride was four hours so just in case you know i, I downloaded some episodes on crunchyroll and then i saw like i don't know it was like kind of like promoing the film and i'm like oh wow and then i saw that it was like just released on crunchyroll and i was like oh this is perfect so i downloaded that as well but i just never watched it went back down there for christmas same thing i had it downloaded just never ended up watching it but I knew that I wanted to watch it at night or at least, you know, when it was dark, once the sun was down. And man, that that was perfect. It was literally something about it just told me like this is like nighttime vibes, cozy nighttime vibes. And it was the absolute perfect vibe, the absolute perfect atmosphere. Um, I definitely recommend if you haven't watched the movie already or maybe even if you're going to rewatch it, watch that shit at night, man. Get, get cozy. All right, now let me talk about the actual movie, what happens and whatnot, right? So, well, first of all, like I said, the visuals were, I mean, goodness gracious, that movie was fucking gorgeous. No surprise because, you know, that's basically the whole reason I wanted to watch it. I didn't know what it was about. I literally just, like I said, I was going to watch it off of women theaters when it dropped and, um... I just knew it was like some, some movie about a girl and her cat. That's what I had in my mind. And I think maybe something about her door too. One of the reasons I don't really watch movies or anime films or whatever is because like, bro, it's not a series. So like when I get attached to the characters and when I get, you know, immersed in the in the universe once it's over it's over and it's like i mean and this goes for you know any film really it's kind of just like dang like now it's over like it's over so quickly it's it's almost as if you binged a whole series but like you didn't because like the whole series is only two hours long so it's like after the movie i was like dang i i definitely i kind of want more and i low-key wanted to watch it again I, I i actually contemplated a couple times watching it again um you know the next night and the night after before i get to what the movie is about the voice acting was was pretty damn good. Um, so much so that like I looked to see like who was voicing it. it seemed like both of them are like musical artists. I'm like, damn, they they was in a bag. Like this was natural. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're a musical artist, like you're using your voice, you're using your vocals, so you know, they're well trained vocally. But I mean, it was just like a lot of the voice acting just sounded so authentic and, and just, just pleasing to the ear in general. Nice emotion. Oh my gosh, in that, that OST, especially. <laughs> bro, man, that shit, oh my goodness, bro. Oh my gosh, man. Nah, yeah, that shit. Nah, y'all gotta watch that movie. So the journey, it was it was just like a, oh my gosh. Okay, so let me talk about the movie real quick. Now, it's, it's nothing, I, I wouldn't say it was anything spectacular, mind-blowing, anything like that. Um, but I definitely did enjoy some of the concepts in the movie. For one, bro, when when dude turned into the chair, I was like, what the fuck? That shit was, well, first of all, he disappeared. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? Oh, this cat is, cat was like, me. And then, and then, boop, he was gone. And then all of a sudden I started zooming in on the chair. I'm like, oh my gosh, turn the motherfucker into the chair. And just the chair running was so goofy. Like him, I don't even remember his name. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sota. Sota be in the chair, man. That shit was hilarious. Man, boy, when I say that cat was annoying, man, I went to punt the shit out of that cat, man. I'm like, bro, fuck out of here, dude. Get the fuck on, man. And my fuck, oh, oh my goodness, bro. But like, it was like, bro, and it was like, excuse me, didn't love me. <laughs> man, that shit was like, I wasn't, I mean, it was like, it was like, damn, because it's like, but it's like, what are you about, though? I mean, it was a little confusing, Daijin or whatever, right? But, I mean, I I also feel like the movie was just, you know, the different perspectives were put together well, you know, how, or kind of the different storylines, you know, there were a couple different storylines in, in, the, in the movie, right? So you got Suzume trying to, I don't know, find herself and, and, and connect with 
some find some love, connect with love, whatever, right? And connect with her former self. Um, the missing, basically, the missing piece to her her chair puzzle, right? You know, her missing leg, missing support beam. Uh, and then you got Sota, who is a closer, I think they were called, and he's journeying out, and you know, he's kind of just on a mission to do what he do. Uh, and then you also have the aunt who is worried about Suzume and is like, you know, the 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 guardian, the parental figure that's just like losing sleep over their child. And I just love how it portrayed, like obviously we as the audience know Suzume's whereabouts, what she's doing and why she's gone and you know, but like it was, it was, it made it easy to immerse in the, uh, in the aunt's perspective where it's like, like bro, she's she's calling her and like, boom, finds she answers like, oh my gosh, where are you? Like literally, where are you? Your phone says that you're all the way here. Like, what are you doing out there? You better not be messing around with that boy. And, she, and then she's just like, oh, da, 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 blah, blah. yeah, no, but and then just hangs up. Like, bro, you would be, I mean, like, bro, I mean, I don't really have to explain it, but like, that's, that would be absolutely nerve wracking. As you could see, it was stressful as hell, but I loved my favorite part. Honestly, I had two favorite parts of the movie. I love when she, I love when she got picked up by the one, one, the one chick with kids. And then she, you know, and she like babysat them. That part was really cute um, and funny. And um, and my other favorite part was when oh my damn, I, I low key tearing up uh, thinking about it. But like when when Suzume and the aunt were like yelling at each other in the car, like before Sada Jean or whatever the fuck the name was, the black cat pulled up because Suzume was never clear about like what the fuck she was doing. So her aunt's just like. Okay, look, you're not gonna tell if you're not gonna tell me what the, get the fuck up the car. We're leaving, like, bro, like, help, help me understand. Like, if you're not gonna help me understand, like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, I'm taking your ass home. I just, I just spent all this money to fly out here to find you, and like, bro, we're going home. I don't know what the fuck you're doing, and you're not telling me. It, but you're mad at me for not understanding, but you're not letting me understand. You're not helping me to understand. And so then when all the feelings poured out and, and she was like, and she, hey, that shit she said, like, oh, I can't, I can't, yeah, I got to devote all my time to you and I got to make sure you're good and da, 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 and I can't even focus on myself. That's why I can't, you know, date anyone. Like, I, I can't even live. I'm not living. I'm getting old and it's all your fault. Da, da. Like, that shit was heavy, bro. But like, but what I love about it is that even though that seems harsh or whatever, like that, that shit was so real because people have these emotions. Like say, say you have like a special, you know, special sibling or whatever. Like, you know, look at, look at if you've seen Ranking of Kings, I'll just use that for an example. Daida was the younger sibling. Boji was older, but obviously Boji had some issues and his younger brother's always looking at him like, this might not be the best example, actually, but let me just let me just imagine you have somebody you have to you have to make sure you're taking care of like all the time, like special. You have someone with special needs, you know, in your family or whatnot. Obviously, they have special needs, so like they're gonna you're going to need to devote more time and attention to them and care, and that's also going to drain you because you know they're they're not going to be. I don't want to say they're not normal, but you know what I mean. Like it's not going to be the normal routine of. Okay, every like they can't take care of themselves, you know, so you're going to have to spend the extra part of you. So say you're going to work, working, 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 then you come home or you have to pick them up from school, whatever, blah, 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 right? And then you have to take care of like every almost every single thing they're doing at home. Like that's going to be draining. So obviously it wasn't that bad with her, but just having to take care, making sure, like that's that's a lot, especially for somebody that didn't have kids beforehand. Or maybe didn't, you know, obviously she took her in. Obviously she loves her. But at the same time, like, it's just so real how it's like you you can feel these things. And it's like, say that, like I said, my example that I was giving, I didn't even finish the example. Obviously you love them, whoever's got special needs, right? But there are definitely going to be those thoughts where it's like, oh my goodness, like, oh, man, like I wish I could just get one moment of like peace like where i could just chill and relax and i didn't have to you know and so then it's like it sucks because if you think those things then you're gonna be like oh man i'm a piece of shit like why am i thinking like this this is unfair but it's it, it's unfair to you 
that's just like that's just how it goes but like those are your feelings those are true feelings it doesn't mean you're a bad person that's normal to 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 be you know drained and to be longing for something more instead of just you know she was kind of putting that she wasn't gonna abandon her sister's kid like what what she was just not gonna take her in like of course she was gonna and that was love when she said like from now on you're my daughter you know but like and especially, you know, with attitude and, you know, not listening, like, especially in, in, and then the shit just, the catalyst was her not sharing shit. So like that normal teenage, like it, it's kind of like rebellion, but like, it seemed like rebellion to her, even though she had like a bigger mission, but like, like I said, she wasn't explaining the shit. So like, oh my gosh, man, I know I'm sort of starting to talk in circles now, but like, man, that shit was just, that shit was just so heavy. Cause it's like some things like that shit is so real but people are so afraid to be real you know everything's always got to be positive and it's like oh man i don't want to let people know how i feel or you know you're not a bad person for feeling how you feel just for instance i'll give another example that's kind of different but it, it has its similarities imagine someone has a crush on you and they let it be known or you know or whatever or they try to you know they try to you know make a move they try to they ask you out whatever right and you reject them or you don't like you you don't the feeling isn't mutual and you have to reject them and then you see like they're sad about it or like you know they you see their mood kind of change and then you start feeling bad and it's like dang but it's like you didn't do any like that's just how you feel like you don't feel you don't reciprocate those same feelings so like it's not fair to you to be like dang now now he's sad because of me now she's sad because of me like obviously that might be a natural feeling but it's like and then if you know you're altruistic or whatever then you might feel the need to reach out to them and be like hey cheer up but then at the same time it's like how do you cheer up somebody that you rejected you know that fucks with you but you know it's just like the alternative would be like oh yes you know you accept their hand and you know and you become their partner or whatever and it's like now you're in a relationship that you don't even want to be in you don't like this person like so like it's like true feelings are real and so i feel like this is a better way to like this might be a better way since obviously not everyone is in the position where it's like oh they have to take care of someone that has special needs or whatever i feel like this you know a uh, crush type of situation is a whole lot easier to relate to you're not a you're not a bad person for rejecting someone because that's just how you feel or don't feel and that's that's true human emotion and i just feel like sometimes you know that aspect of humanity isn't displayed enough because even though their family like bro everybody everyone at one point has been like you know had feelings like Okay, I, I don't want to say everyone, but you know, it's pretty common for someone, you know, a family member to piss you off and you're like, oh my gosh, you're so fucking annoying. Oh, oh I hate you, this, da, 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 you know, whether you say that shit or not, right? In your mind or to them, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, your family, and most, most often than not, you know, it's all love at the end of the day, you'll get over it, right? But you still have those feelings where it's like, oh my gosh, I wish this part of you was different. I wish you would do this differently. So that that part of the movie just hit for me that shit was so fire but aside from that i know i talked so much about that but i'm telling you like that bro it, it wasn't even it it wasn't even that much like it was maybe like a one minute scene or whatever i don't know um or maybe a build up of a couple minutes but it just it just all exploded it all gushed out like the, the true feelings gushed out and that's that's her something that she had been holding back you know she because okay so one of the things she said she was i think she was like who would want to date somebody with, that has a daughter or da da da, right? And it's like she wouldn't have a daughter if she didn't take her in. But I mean, like her sister died. So once again, like what she was just going to leave her out there in the cold holding the three legged chair? <laughs> like, you know, so there are some situations where you're kind of put in. And sometimes the negativity to, you know, the um, awful feelings might take over. And it's like, dang, I'm feeling this more than the positive but it's like i mean it's kind of just like the balance kind of like how the cats were yin and yang that that's that's the shit that that's how it goes you know you can't have good without bad right obviously there was love uh in those two and i'm glad that they reconciled and um also i can't quite it's been a week since i watched it my memory's ass so i can't remember specific details but i think like you know when they were i think it was when they were riding on the bike the aunt apologized but i think she's 
I don't think she said like she apologized, but she didn't say that she didn't mean what she said. I think she might have actually said that she meant what she said, but like not as but she didn't mean it for to be that harsh or something like that. I really can't remember. But regardless, right? I mean, that were like I said, those were her true feelings. You know what I'm saying? And obviously they came out very aggressive and cause boom, it came to a boiling point. But you can only repress your true feelings for so long. There was this one time where I was talking to my mom. This was actually I think on New Year's of 2022 it was like midnight or whatever right i was talking to her and, and we kind of started arguing a little bit um or she she was trying to i don't know we were arguing about something like light argument or whatever and i was i started explaining myself to her and all of a sudden like i just started getting louder and louder and um you know i was talking about how i feel like i'm you know i'm always trying to please people and but I'm never doing anything to to make myself happy or something like that. But like that last part, I couldn't even get out. Like in the middle of my sentence, I just like froze. Like and like I kept trying to speak, and I like I couldn't speak. And and like I just started kind of like like it, it like bro, it was I completely broke down. Uh, and all of a sudden, like just tears flowed out of my like I would bro. It was the craziest shit that ever happened to me, but that was the years and years of feeling the way I felt and I was finally starting to express it. And since I, you know, sort of unlocked that window, that door or whatever, all of a sudden, boom, all that shit burst out at once and it just overflowed. And like my brain, my body literally could not compute. Like I was literally stuck. I was frozen and I was just like frozen there and I just started crying. And, um, you know, that's, that's what, that's what happened with, you know, in the movie, basically. She was like, damn, Susan May is a hindrance to me, but like, that's family, that's love. So like, it, it, I have an obligation to take care of her. But yeah, you know, moving on from, from the deep, hard hidden emotional shit. I mean, like the, the journey, uh, was really, it was just really enjoyable just to, just to go through, I mean, I saw, I saw a couple of reviews kind of saying like the movie was pointless or you know, oh, there wasn't much this and that, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, it really, it truly was a cozy movie. It didn't have to be the deepest. It didn't have to be the most mind blowing. I mean, I loved, uh, you know, the ending and I love, I love the door and the whole, I mean, nah, shit. It was a great movie to me because I enjoyed it a lot. The door, the whole door in the different, in the, never after I or ever after I can't remember what it was called but all of that was um intriguing to me and um like off rip when she opened it and it was like boom and then she saw herself in it and we know her mom disappeared and how it seemed like her mom it was her mom at you know at the beginning that was kind of like when she was like mom because I think she was like yeah she was like mom and then it kind of showed like the figure kind of like reaching out to her or whatever boom gets to the end of the movie and it's her and I, it makes sense because at the very beginning they explain like or i think so to explain that uh time is all time is happening at the same time in the ever after so it makes sense that uh now obviously like it was kind of a paradox with the with the chair because the chair had four legs and all of a sudden it only had three that's because older susan may gave younger susan may the three-legged chair but it's like how did older susan may so you know that's where it kind of gets confusing and whatnot but regardless aside from that like i really liked how the shit came full circle because the whole movie obviously now you know maybe now i do be getting immersed in sometimes like something like this i'm not really thinking like oh what's what's the hit of the mystery like what's what's the you know so the whole time i was thinking like okay her mother was like a sorcerer or closer or whatever something something special right and she disappeared because maybe she was a keystone or somewhere or something like that. But it, towards the end, I kind of understood like, okay, there was like a, cause with the sirens and whatnot, there was a disaster. And that's why all the shit there was like destroyed. Cause there was like a tsunami or something like that. And I was like, cause when they first pulled up, I'm like, why is this shit like, but so I'm like, okay, so she just died. She, there was never anything special about her. She, disappeared because she died and like they just never found her body 
and so her death was never confirmed unfortunately but yeah i mean i didn't even really plan to talk this long um, I just wanted to I just wanted to talk about I just had to discuss it a little bit because I really enjoyed the movie once again like the visuals I mean like a ship boy oh my gosh it just it was just a nice little cozy adventure like there was a little adventure to it as well so um, you know there were laughs there were you know wholesome moments I mean <laughs> when when the aunt pulled up and thought like bro or one of the funniest parts was when uh, dude was singing in the car <laughs> Bro, the buddy's friend was funny. And um, it, it was, I just really liked how like we met new people along the way. Um, first it was, uh, I think, I think first it was like that student from some other school, right? And then she left there. And then every time like there was a departure, it's like, dang, don't want to say goodbye. Um, you know, just making friends along the way uh, in the adventure. So it was, it was the chick at first um with the oranges and whatnot right and then she gave her a whole new fit i think right and then boom we went to the bus stop and then the the mom with the with the twins or the two kids pulled up and then you know and then we babysat for her then we helped out in the, in the uh little karaoke bar or whatever that was then we moved on and then i i think that's when uh we met sota's uh friend <sighs> yeah man just that I think I just I just th thought it was a cool movie. Um, I plan on doing this a little more often, just like either watching anime films and then, you know, talking about them. Now, I honestly, I thought this was going to be like less than 10 minutes, but, you know. Kind of yapped and yapped about the uh, deep, hard hitting emotional part, hard hitting for some, maybe or maybe only for me. But hey, man, it, it, it was just relatable and real. And I just really loved it. And also, like, there was the intrigue of, uh, because at the beginning of the movie, I was kind of like, okay, is this all that's going to happen? We're just going to keep running the doors and then saying the chant and then closing them. I was like, I can see how this might get a little repetitive. I was hoping it wouldn't. And then after I had that thought, you know, it started switching up and, you know, it wasn't the same shit every time. Um, so, Suzume doesn't love me. <laughs> yeah, man. I think it was a great movie because, I mean, I don't think, like, you can analyze stuff about it, but I don't think it's something, like, you're forced to analyze, you know? Like, I feel like it should just be a movie that, you know, you, you lay down and to, to watch and enjoy, and, you know, that's what I did. That's exactly what happened. And, yeah, I guess I should shut the fuck up now, huh? Y'all, y'all get it. I liked the movie. It was cool to me. Score? I don't know, because... Shit, after I've, oh my gosh, in that, that OST, especially the, <laughs> bro, man, that shit, oh my goodness, bro. Oh my gosh, man. Nah, yeah, that shit, nah, y'all gotta watch that movie, even though I just spoiled the whole shit. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, yeah, that shit was good, man. I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, the score. When I, bro, when I finished it, I was thinking 10 out of 10, but then I was like, okay, well, wait. And this is where, this is why I don't really score things because it's like, I didn't, there was nothing there. I didn't see anything wrong with the film. You know, I enjoyed it to the fullest. You know, I wasn't like, oh man, I wish this, this, this. I wish this, oh, this right here was good. Blah, blah, blah. Like I just enjoyed it fully. So, but at the same time, then it's like, okay, how do you score? Do you start from 10 and then dock off points? Or do you start at a certain number and then be like, okay, yeah, this was good, or it was really good, or it was really, really good. So, you know, I don't really do scores. I just, I would just say that I enjoyed it a lot. So, I mean, I would probably critically, uh, I don't know, like enjoyment is a big part. Like, I mean, it, like I said, it don't gotta be groundbreaking. It don't gotta be mind blowing. It don't gotta be crazy deep or whatever. Like, it, you know, as long as it's entertaining and enjoyable and, and that's what it was, um, it's a cool little journey. So I don't know. I guess I would probably say, eight out of 10. I would just put it at an eight out of 10, maybe seven and a half. Um, but I loved it. So yeah.